Why are you talking about tea? <laughs> we're, we were all invited to this cocktail. Okay, okay, Alice. Okay. Not to worry. Well, you yes, have all your Ms. guests here, and they're all wondering if they should be in teams. Why would we be in teams, Ralph? Oh, no. This we're is all on our own. Yeah, we're all on our own. It's a Halloween we're all party. Our and tell people, watch out for the lamp, the low light. to uh, oversee our activities this evening. Uh, although, I didn't think that we would need the uh, Can we duties to of, a, a of a private detective. However, now that you're here, I'm sure that you'll be able to make sure that everything goes in an orderly way, and I think you should keep an eye on these ladies over here, especially no, the one with the sword. Yeah, no one's going on. <laughs> yes, yes, that's she my hope. She could fly away too. at any moment. Uh, Miss Munson did have some concerns for her safety, but I don't see what? any cause for concern at the moment. Safety? Look at me, I'm always concerned for my safety. Oh, uh, by the way, Miss Munson told me that you wanted to meet her and several other guests in a private room as soon as possible. I That's took right. the liberty of arranging that for you. Oh, thank you very much. All you have to go is, is through this door, and a waiter will escort you Which to the Which door was that? This one over there? Through this door the Okay, yes. well, I hope there's room over there. Oh, uh, you I, could go in the kitchen, oh, I think. Okay. I believe some people here are waiting for you. Oh, all right. Huh. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it's about time we were beginning to think this meeting would never happen. I know. But why here, Ralph? Why drag us all the way to northeastern Pennsylvania yeah. and to a costume party, no less? <laughs> yes. Well, I thought it would be nice to spend some time in this beautiful Rosetti house, don't you think? And aren't you enjoying northeastern Pennsylvania and all the beautiful fall foliage? Okay. That's right, that's right, absolutely, absolutely. Can we skip all the happy talk until we all got what we came for? And besides, and besides, this is like a second home to me. I graduated from the University of Scranton. It's a fine school, even though a lot of the locals call it the U. <laughs> so, Ralph, did you major in Houdini's Greatest Escapes? Huh. No need for sarcasm, Alice. Not after all that... Don't point your finger at I me. I will if I want to. Not after all that we've been through together. We can have a yeah, grand reunion after we got what we came for. Hugs all around, if you wish. Oh, well, uh, perhaps that's the best that I can hope for. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll give you everything that you came for. But first... 
kind of host am I if I don't introduce um, some distinguished people here? Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce four very important people. Let's see, who's first? Oh, Miss Marla Munson. Oh, go on with me. Isn't she pretty? You want me to spell that for once, Alice? <laughs> oh, and yes, she is a former beauty pageant winner. Yes, Miss Hades, did you see that? <laughs> yeah. And believe it or not, she's a physic. She's a physicist. And she has, um, she wants to start her own uh, beauty product business, but of course, None of the ladies here need any beauty products. Oh. Look how beautiful that they are. <laughs> oh, Ralph, you're such a flatterer. I had thought you were too young to be an old-fashioned chauvinist. Oh. oh, and she's quick with a quip, too. And next, we have another gentleman. Oh, let's see, the one in the, the pirate costume. <laughs> Hi, lady. <laughs> He's attorney Charles Patterson, and doesn't he look impressive? He hopes that a lot of people find him impressive because he's running for governor of California. Ooh. Thanks, Rob. Uh, the auditions are closed. I have my campaign. Uh, Alice. Alice, you should it down for two seconds. I'm sorry, what did you say, Charles? What did you say, Charles? I just said auditions are closed. I have my campaign manager. Oh, I, I guess. I think Dunaway has had a little too much to drink already. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you better because elections are coming up soon. Don't we feel lucky that he's here with the election so soon? Coming up. Uh, and next, we have this glamorous lady who uh, needs no introduction, <laughs> especially if you're a fan of old film. Old, 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 old. Excuse me. Uh, especially when you, if you watch those Turner Classic movies. Miss oh. Alice Fairchild. But she's hoping for a big comeback. <laughs> Ralph, I have not been away that long. Yeah, of course, all you look at are those comic book superhero movies on those wide screens. He has no idea what it's like to watch a quality film. You mean like the ones that get viewers? Ooh, I get viewers. I bet you do. Ooh, well, at least I'm not in hell like you are. Ooh, you two better watch out now. Play nice. All right, Alice. I, I promise I'll watch if you get lucky, but keep on hoping. Okay, and finally, I have Willy Wonka over here. Um, <laughs> this is Andy. What's your last name again, Andy? Reynolds. Reynolds, of course. Uh, he just proves that old tennis pros never retire. They just become tennis coaches. Because <laughs> that's exactly what Andy did. <laughs> Am well, I right or am I wrong? If I ever get to open that academy, well, you might actually be able to do something about your backhand. <laughs> well, all right, well, we've had our introductions, and we've had some good trust in Perry repartee. So that'll be it for now. Um, my friends and I, why, we have to go away for just a little while. I promise we'll be back. We have some private matters to discuss. I introduced everybody, right? Okay, so we're good to go. Um, which way would that be, Jeff? Oh, this way. This way. Okay. I'll meet you there. All right, come on. What was all that about? What is Linda doing with all those people? Why are they all here? Well, uh, here's what I know, or at least what my client told me. He lives in the Los Angeles area, the other four do too. Anyway, Lyndon was the private secretary to John Middleton Barlow, who was a billionaire. John Middleton Barlow. That sounds like a name a billionaire would have, doesn't it? Well, about a year ago, he invited Ralph and those people to a special reception on his yacht. 
and then he told them that he had been keeping tabs on their careers for some time. I guess he had a reputation for being an eccentric philanthropist who liked to spring surprise gifts on people. Uh, well, because he wanted to help them and challenge them. He was going to set up a sum of six million dollars, and he would distribute that among them one year later. Well, the largest share would go to the person who made the most progress toward their goal, uh, the next largest share to the one who made the next best progress, and so on. Wait, was Lyndon in line for those millions? Yes, he was. Seems that on his own time, Ralph was trying to develop a new kind of computerized personal assistant that would be completely voice-driven. So why are they all here? Why do they all have to meet with Lyndon? Because John Middleton Barlow, well, you might say he threw a monkey wrench into the project four months ago. He died suddenly. Two heart attacks. But he had already instructed his lawyer to set aside the six million dollars in his will. And here's the problem. He specified that the contest could be abandoned and the money distributed among the five of them. But he said that Ralph should decide how much each one would get. It's all up to him. So that must be why Ralph is here, not in California, right? Right you are. Uh, he was getting so much pressure from all of them that he had, to, he had to escape somehow, so he has been hiding out here. He finally contacted them a week ago and told them to come here because he had made a final decision about the distribution. Well, why on earth would he have everyone come here? Well, he wants to make the announcement and distribute the legacy right here in public in front of some good, ordinary Americans. <laughs> well, he's a uh, noble. That's what Miss Munson told me. That way, nobody can accuse him of hiding anything or double dealing. And once the distribution is done in public, it'll be harder, well, a little harder anyway, for any one of them to make trouble. Do you mean that the six million dollars is going to be doled out here in front of everyone? Yes, that's the plan. Well, how are they going to do it? Bring out a big check like they do with lottery winners? Well, could be. I don't know for sure. And I don't know even if Ralph Linden knows for sure whether the six million is going to be in the form of checks or stocks or cash or precious jewels. Excuse me. Sorry, excuse me. Excuse me. Hey, boss. Boss, I just want to let you know that Lyndon is having short interviews with each of those four people that wanted to see him. And that one guy, he looked very happy. Thanks, Eve. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Miss Eve Ballard, my secretary and assistant. I think they, he said it was going to be short interviews. They should be done pretty soon. Okay. Yeah. I feel like any minute they're going to come back. You know, I All right. I think we can return. Is everyone ready? <laughs> is everybody having a good time? <laughs> Very, very good, very good. I'm sorry that we had to leave you nice people, but we had some private ma financial matters to discuss, and, you know, we didn't want to seem rude and ignorant to do it in front of everyone. So that's over with now. Jeff, do you have that for me? Uh, maybe he should give it to you over here. Oh, over there? Okay. Just Excuse me. Pardon me. Mr. Linden. Oh, yes, Jeff. I understand you were hungry. Oh, this is my favorite. Huh? Well, I feel kind of rude. Nobody at all. Oh, look at there's still some been eating, But he got something different. But this is the famous chicken salad. Is that what you asked for? It's my favorite. I know. Don't favorite. I love chicken salad. Oh, look how good it looks. I can. It's delicious. Do it. Mm. Oh. Jeff, did you make this? Well, let's just say yes. Oh. <laughs> Jeff, are you taking credit for something that was... Oh, uh, uh, wrong. <laughs> that was uh, part, of, part of the name. Um, is there anything? I told you. Oh. <laughs> Mom, you have to shoot. Yeah. Well, you have to shoot. Water. Here's what, is he choking? He's in the water. Oh, Jeff, can you get me some water? water. I'm going to embarrass. I have him some water. Uh, some water? Uh, well, we're going to No, no, I really don't Why care. Why don't you come no. in and get some water? Come I don't in feel very well, does anybody? Oh, oh, no. oh, 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 o
achieving things for himself and for everybody. I don't know why he collapsed like that. I do hope we get a bulletin. And those four people, I don't think all of them got along too well. Well, is he okay? Well, well they're continuing to tend to his aid, so we're hoping for the best. Yes. Please keep Ralph in your prayers yes. and your thoughts. Yes. Thoughts and prayers for Ralph. He's a likable sort. That's right. Thank goodness. You see what's going on. Well, what else do you do in a situation like this? You think and you pray. Ladies, <laughs> pray. Well, oh, it's just a costume. <laughs> I regret to say I am not really Miss Hades. <laughs> we certainly have enough to start a prayer round about, you know. We could go all the way around. Like the wave? <laughs> yes. So a like y'all go like this? A prayer wave. Okay, you start it. <laughs> <laughs> and then... We're doing a prayer, Ralph. We're doing a prayer. We're doing a prayer. You're from Brady. Go like this. When it's you're from Brady. It's a costume, Alice. May I have your attention, please? Unfortunately, we were unable to save Mr. Linden. Yes. Apparently, he apparently he had a severe allergic reaction to some small pieces of shrimp that were found in the chicken salad sandwich he was eating. He was extremely allergic to shellfish, apparently, and didn't know there was any in the sandwich. And because he seemed to like chicken salad sandwiches, you did. Light you belt, said right? you made it. Weird recipe. I, Why did you I, said I you did made it? Create for Spain. He did not just he didn't like chicken salad sandwiches, he was obsessed with them. He was always asking about them or having them made. It became a joke, didn't it? Constantly. Oh, excuse me, folks. I'm curious about something. How come all four of you seem to know Lyndon so well? Was he a friend of yours? Well, he... Tom from California. In a way, I suppose he was. He was Mr. Barlow's private secretary, and when Mr. Barlow took an interest in the four of us in our careers, we would be invited to his estate quite often. Yes. Once a week sometimes, and Lyndon was always there, and he would often take charge of us. He would show us around the grounds, and he would always be in the background, and we would have our meetings with Barlow. Now, Barlow was very old, but he was very busy, so our time with him was often limited. So, Lyndon, as I said, would be in charge of us, and he would always organize dinner parties, and cocktail parties, and picnics, and horseback riding. <laughs> Oh, how about those hot tub parties? Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh my word. Well, words. one night, after a meeting with Barlow in the library, we went out to the pool area, and there was a hot tub, and Lyndon told us to go in the changing room and put on some swimsuits, but he said they were optional. <laughs> yeah, so we all went in and put our swimsuits on, and we came out, and there was Lyndon by the hot tub, stark. Oh, and you and should have seen the look sense. on his face. When he found that we all had clothes on and he didn't, well, he ran. He said, "Oh, but I'll be right back, just a minute." And he leaves and he went back into the changing room. And personally, I didn't think he'd ever come back, but he did, wearing swim trunks. And then he had this sheepish smile on his face, 
And he looked at us and we're staring at him and, and he didn't say anything and neither did any of we. I suppose that's what happens when a man reveals his shortcomings. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It is rude to speak ill of the day. No. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, I want to point out that if any of you knew about Lyndon's allergy problem and uh, bought him the sandwich, you could be charged with murder. What? Oh, I did. He's the one that said he made I, it. I did. He I, said he made it. I presented it. He did. Sam, well, you, all, you, you took credit. Well, Why excuse would you me, excuse me. Sam, we all knew about his allergy. You mean he discussed it with all of you? Well, not exactly. Do you have a cell phone with you? Yes, or does but Eve? what does that have to do with my question? Well, Google. if you Google Mr. Barlow's name, he has a biography, of course. He's an important man. Well, because Ralph was so central to his business, he also is mentioned, and he has a short biography as well. Can you read aloud the last line of that biography? The only unusual thing about me is that I'm very allergic to shellfish. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marla, I must say it's clear now that you were probably well aware of his condition. Are you claiming that this means all of you had to know, too? Well, obviously, Sam, when we found out separately that he was interested in all of us, what do you think we did? We pulled out our cell phones and started looking them up. Well, that's just one more proof that many of us might forget our wallets from time to time, but we never want to be without our cell phones. However, we still have to discover if any one of you four bought that lethal sandwich for Lyndon. So far, we haven't made much progress. Hey, Paz, uh, I was just talking to the kitchen staff, and I found some things you might find interesting. See? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. But then that butler said that weird shit about making yeah. it. Uh, yeah. Good news, everybody. Right. Eve has been talking to the kitchen help, and they report that late this afternoon a package appeared on the counter in the kitchen addressed to Mr. Ralph Linden, which the waiter then brought to him. Uh, anyway, Eve, you showed initiative as usual. Kudos to you. Oh, you know me, always being indispensable and inimitable. Just make sure you remember it when it's time for my bonus. Uh, now, I have another chore for you. Check out the room that Lyndon had here before everything crashed. See if he had left anything behind that we ought to look at. And then, when you have time, get on the internet and see what you can find out about our people here. Huh. Will do. On a bus. Huh. I'll tell you. Living or dead, Lyndon has always been some trouble for us. And Marla, you had an affair with him? <laughs> oh, I'm not surprised. Even when I did any film shoots, there's always some sleazy, pushy broad trying to have an affair and sleep with the director, the producer, or the cameraman. Oh, and from what I understand, most of the time that sleazy, pushy broad was you. You little slut! You. Okay, never mind. We should take in our claws. Having a cat fight right now might not be good for our own interests. I suppose you're right. I suppose you're right. <laughs> you all heard that, right? Yes. Hey, I was going through all of Mr. Linden's things, and I found where we ha where he had all of his medicine, there was a phone tucked away that's different than the phone he had in his pocket. I thought that was suspicious, so I checked it out, and well, I think I found a bombshell. Hmm. Want to take a listen? Of course. Suspicious and convenient. <laughs> Right? Yes. Mm. Uh, listen up, you four hopefuls. Thanks to Eve again, I was just listening to a bit of Lyndon's private remarks about you and his plans for the legacy. Mm -hmm. I think you should listen too, right away. Uh, Mr. Spade, I'm a lawyer and I'm very interested in what's on that recording, but we four hopefuls, as you said, are now suspects of a murder charge, like it or not. I think we should make an arrangement so that none of us are accused of tampering with the evidence somewhere down the road. We should get a volunteer who will watch us carefully while we listen to the tape and until the phone is secured. Ma'am, Minnie Mouse, would you be our volunteer? <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll brief her very quickly about what we have to do. Sam, can I talk to you for a moment? I can still count on you, right? I don't trust any of these people. Can you count on me? Well, that depends. Depends? Depends on what? On whether you've been telling the truth. I will look out for your interests, but uh, because you're my client, but if you had anything to do with the murder, 
I won't try to protect you. Sam, I thought I was more than just your client. Mm -hmm. well, yes. I was your lover, but <laughs> now I have to be a detective. Did you hear it? All right, I briefed Katie over here, and she knows what she has to be prepared to do, so we're ready to listen to this thing. Let's go. All right, boss, are you okay? Yes. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, in a few moments, I will open this strong box and distribute equal shares of a legacy from the estate of Mr. John Middleton Barlow, no the late, very distinguished philanthropist. Ms. Marla Munson, Attorney Charles Patterson, Ms. Alice Fairchild, and Mr. Andrew Reynolds will receive shares worth seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a separate legacy approximately three million dollars worth will be reserved for a special project the creation of robotic personal assistance so now without further ado let us open the strong box no uh, that won't do I gotta make the robots more important, more like a gift for all people, or uh, a, a public benefit or something, so they will seem greedy when they object. Let me see. Let's try it this way. A large, separate legacy will be reserved for a, a special project. Dear to the heart of John Middleton Barlow, the creation of robotic personal assistance. This will be Mr. Barlow's gift to the public, a, a, a valuable resource for everyone, the rich and the poor, the young and the elderly, the, the, the handicapped and the gifted. Oh, yeah. That's better. That might do. Now, let me see what the dirt diggers have come up with about the four parasites. What? What a load of self-serving bullshit. You know, if Lyndon weren't already dead, I'd beat him to death with my own shoe. Uh, I don't believe I, that. I think you four should think a moment before we turn the recording back on. Do you want people to hear what rough stuff Lyndon said about you? Do you even want your fellow parasites to hear it? Well, I want to hear what that creep said about me so I can explain it or deny it. <laughs> 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 okay, go again. Okay. 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 Begin with Marla. Marla the lovely. Marla the fascinating. Oh, here it is. Marla the trap. <laughs> Mm. I prefer friendly! Well, oh, this might be too over the top. But that's what I'm paying for. The professor quote makes the case. She tried to sleep her way into her degree. She falsified research reports. She tried to blackmail the innocent professor. <clears throat> Women of America. Can you really trust your looks to a corrupt woman and her unverified products? Trust my animals too much. I would never! have on our overworked cellular <laughs> star, aside from her vulgar talk and her minimal talent. Oh. Well, that's true. Oh, this is bizarre. She has confined a secret husband in an asylum against his will. Oh. Uh, it's like a National Enquirer headline. Will anybody believe it? Baby, this would need to be spread by a whispering campaign. All right, on to Attorney Charles. Ooh. Now this is surefire. A long active friendship with a mafia prince documented with plenty of pictures. That would certainly send big bucks political contributors scurrying away. 
And finally, oh, that's Andy, it. Okay. the has been <laughs> tennis <laughs> pro, <laughs> who wants what? to be a tennis guru mogul. <laughs> no need to plan anything. He talks about that old betting scandal himself. He doesn't have burning ambitions. He just wants to be comfortable. He'll be content with a small scale tennis can and he'll keep his mouth shut about everything or else. What a lousy, sleazy sewer rat! And to think, he always thought of me as someone special. He treated me like he was some nerdy fan. When I told him about this special project I was going to do, it, it involved that screen, the, the uh, special play that Shaw wrote, The Millionaires. Well, he started gushing about how I would be so perfect for the role. I told him I was going to do the film project from it, the one that Katherine Hepburn, what it, they wrote it for and they never produced. Well, he started going on and on and saying, oh, did you know Katherine Hepburn? What is she like? And, oh, did he ever talk about Spencer Tracy? What about him? And he said, I was so right for the part. And now, now he goes on about Fred. Oh, if, if anything comes out about him, if he hears about it, I... You, you mean it's true? Yeah. Well, <laughs> all right. The truth is... Fred and I, we met at the Betty Ford Clinic that years makes sense. ago, that makes sense. and well, we hit it off. He was the sweetest, the greatest guy in the world that I ever met. He reminded me of this other man my, my twin sister knows, a, a Joseph Strunch. Well, at any rate, we hit it off and we did get married, and we had a wonderful time together, but he is a very private person, so he begged that I not tell the public about us, so I didn't, for his sake. And then he ended up having a stroke, and I couldn't take care of him, not in the right way, so I put him up in this very nice living care facility. But now, if, if anything comes back to him and gets him, I don't know what I'm going to do. So if anyone here promotes that information and it gets back to him, so help me, I will find each and every one of you and I will <laughs> make you bleed. And if you're a man, look out, because I will kick you in the groin and bite your ear until your ears bleed. So be careful, every one of you. I love how subtle Alice is. <laughs> But you know, Alice, I had the same impression of Lyndon as you did at the stop. He came off all boyish and vulnerable. But that phone call so cold and manipulative. It's like he wore a mask to attract women. Yes. yes. And just like, just like that professor, he came on to me. And then he turned it around when I wouldn't sleep with him. Oh, really? Yeah, really. <laughs> Maybe I, I will believe you. I think that's advisable. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I go next. I think I can dispose of these mafia connections pretty easily. Mrs. Calabro and I grew up in Gross Point, Michigan together, and we were about to the same age, we were store, and so of course we became best friends. And I never knew what his father's business was. We were concentrating on school and dating and sports. Well, after we both graduated from completely separate colleges, he confided in me. He told me that he had no idea about his father's business and he'd never been involved in any mafia operations. And he wanted to keep it that way for the rest of his life. And as far as I know, he has. So I'm not going to denounce him or ignore him, just to get ahead in politics. Well, good for you, Charles. I'm sure you're doing the right thing. As for what Ralph, as for what Ralph said about me, it's true. I was involved in a betting scandal when I was a young pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a low-ranked tennis pro and we did not make enough money to scrape together for the next tournament. I didn't do, I didn't throw a match or do anything I would consider cheating, but I did bet on myself and other players that I think I would, I would win. However, betting was against the rules, so I was suspended for a year. So now when I coach younger players, I tell them not to be as dumb as I was. And as for what Ralph said about my character, it's true. I don't have very great ambitions. I just want to live a comfortable life. But 
I bet Rob didn't think very much of me because he did con me into giving him tennis lessons for free. Well, we learned quite a bit about the four of you from what Lyndon said and from your responses, and I learned even more from the online uh, searching I asked Eve to do. You all came up with good answers to the charges he made, and you gave the impression that you weren't too worried about the impact they would have on your lives. But I believe you are all more uh, concerned than you're willing to admit. The truth is that each of you is at a crossroads in your life. In the months just ahead, you're all set to move forward into promising futures based on the projects you want to invest in. If you don't get the money you're counting on, or if bad pu publicity, whether it's true or not, interferes, your futures will, will change radically for the worse. And one more thing. It's now clear that one of you is lying about your relationship with Lyndon. One of you knew in advance what he was going to do with the money and what he could do for you. One of you came here to kill him. Mr. Spade, you can't just make those kind of accusations and leave us hanging. And by the way, who is this Miss Ballard anyway? How do we know what sources she has? How, are they reliable? What do they say? Jinkies, Belmont, where are you getting your sources from? And if you think you know who the murderer is, we have the right to demand that you tell us who you think it is and what proof you have. Well, there is one way we can end the suspense you're feeling and answer the questions you have without any more uh, delays or anxiety. The guilty person can just come forward now and confess. That would be the best solution for everybody. Excuse me, it was. Right. I did not do it. This one. I'm pretty sure it was the man. I'd like to kill him, but he's already dead. All right, we can do this the hard way. Andy Reynolds, please come forward. What? Go forward. You, you suspect me? This is crazy. I'll give you the chance to prove I'm crazy. Empty your pockets, and you can put everything on the table there. Would you mind moving your glass? You want to search me? You want me to empty my pockets and put it on the table? What do you expect to find? Why isn't anyone else being treated this way? Just humor me, the crazy detective. A golden ticket. <laughs> <laughs> it's a golden ticket. I don't have pockets, but I'll allow Sam to search my bra. This, ladies and gentlemen, is an EpiPen. If someone is having a severe allergic reaction, he or she should self-inject the antihistamine dose in the hypodermic. I guess that you would have one of these, Andy. So, what are you allergic to? Shellfish, like Linden? No. Sudden changes in skin temperature two hours after a meal. What is that supposed to prove? Well, it shows us what Ralph Linden should have been carrying at all times, but wasn't. And I believe you knew that fact, Andy. And so you also knew what would happen to him after he ate the sandwich you bought for him. This is all guesswork on steroids and completely wrong. No, my conclusion fits in with the pattern of your relationship with Linden. He called you to get everyone to come to his distribution scam because you spent the most time with him alone during the tennis lessons. I also noticed that he didn't need to consult that file of oppo research to find out how you could be liable to blackmail, and he was very confident that you would be silent about everything. You knew he was going to keep most of the legacy for himself, didn't you? Oh, come on, Andy. I bet that when the police check his emails, and yours, they'll find plenty to back me up. This is absolutely crazy. I mean, no one here believes this bullshit that he's come up with, do you? I mean, you. Uh, you don't believe him, do you? Come on, speak uh, up for me, please. Uh, um, ask the eight ball. Ask the eight ball. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Was, was it him? What? What? Was it him? Good. Fine. I'm not sure what that means. Fine. You have me cornered. I don't see any realistic way out. Fine. Lyndon cornered you first, didn't he? So how was he going to keep you silent? By paying you off? No. By threatening me. About the betting scandal. Well, that was just the beginning. He was going to have me killed. Have you killed? Kill you? What do you mean? I didn't know what I was taking on when I agreed to give Ralph tennis lessons. It became very clear to me rather quickly that he wasn't interested in tennis. He couldn't hit a reliable backhand off the side of a barn door, and he, hadn't, he didn't seem to care. What he really seemed to want was, I don't know, some man-to-man -man companionship, a bro, something that he had never had before. So. After the tennis lessons in the, in the changing room or in the shower, he would just tell me about his day and his problems, everything that was bothering him. I heard all about how impatient he got with Barlow, about how he thought his robotic assistants could make him a fortune. 
and how he expected to live once he got enough money. But why did he turn from a friend to a killer? Because I was there the day that he murdered Barlow. <gasps> A heart attack was listed as the cause of death, but Ralph confided in me that he was responsible for it. What? On the day that it happened, I was arriving to the estate for our usual lesson, and an ambulance was driving off. As I approached the front door, I saw Ralph speaking to a doctor, and I think I heard the doctor say that there was nothing else that could have been done after the first attack. He was living on borrowed time. After the doctor left, Ralph grabbed me, literally, and pulled me into the house, and he was deathly pale and, and shaking, and I said, Ralph, sit down, do you want me to get you a drink? And he grabbed my arm and he wouldn't let me go, and he just kept saying to me, I didn't mean to do it, 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 I just, I just saw him lying there, and so I did it. He calmed down, once he calmed down, he told me how he entered the library and saw Barlow lying on the floor. So naturally he rushed over to him and he bent down, and Barlow said, pills, 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 the pills on the table. So Ralph got up, went over to the table, and he picked up the bottle of nitroglycerin pills. And as he looked at the bottle, he thought, with Barlow gone, all his dreams would come true. And so he stood there, did nothing, listened to the old man's gasps and groans until they stopped. Then he called the doctor and the ambulance, and he told them that he was unconscious when he got there. So I tried to be a friend to him. I told him, well, you just froze up. There, there, there was nothing that you could do, especially not now, so why say anything at all? So he eventually calmed down and he went upstairs to rest, and so I left. So what made him want to kill you? Well, apparently, that very same night, he regretted telling me the truth, because the very next day, he called me, and he was unhinged. But he was very firm when he said that I'd better not say anything to anyone or he would ruin me. He would spread the true, more dark version of the betting scandal, scandal that I had confided to him, the fool that I was. And he said, you would just keep calling me. And I said, I would trust him and he would trust me. But apparently he got nervous. S something in him wouldn't let him trust me. And mm -hmm. the fact that I had the power to ruin him so one day he called me, and he was calm. He was icy cold, and he said to me that I would never tell anyone anything ever again as soon as he got enough money. But then in the very next instant, he was his cocky, fun-loving self. He was almost cheerful when he invited me here tonight. But I knew that that threat was real. I need a drink. <laughs> so... So you're the one that gave him the sandwich, then. You had it delivered. So I had arranged anonymously for Ralph to receive his very favorite finger food, a chicken salad sandwich. Made, mixed in, with shrimp. And I was hoping that it would go unnoticed and be ruled an accident, or, or at the very least, throw suspicion onto one of you. You've given up yourself. Saying you made it. Andy, I, I, have my reasons. I believe you'll be charged with the murder of Lyndon, but his threats to you may be mitigating factors. You did have reason to believe he would arrange your killing, whatever happened. That's what I'll try to argue with the DA. Now, I think we can conclude wait, by... Wait, 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 Mr. Spage, what about the money? I'm sure that myself, Miss Munson, and Joan Crawford here will get all of it. <laughs> Since we're not quite sure how Andy will fare... Well, I assume that because of the will, the three of you will get the cash, but first you'll have to deal with the estate. That's my assumption too, but... Can we just look at it now and see what form it's in? Okay. I bet all 80 of these people want to know. I wow. must admit I'm curious too. Yes. I need... Yes, uh, over here. Oh. Sorry, excuse me. It's my job to be fucking moving. Over here. Mm -hmm. What's in it? Oh shit! What the hell is this? What is it? Barlow stamp collection. Stamp. Don job or a job? Uh, stamps. Jack, oh, what'd you do? Sir. That this is the biggest pain in the ass thing that happened. It's just like that that scam that Rivera pulled when he opened up that empty vault on national TV. This is outrageous. All this 
for a lousy stamp? Alice, Alice. What? Alice. Calm the fuck down. It's not a <laughs> uh, okay, Hold on a minute. Uh, here is an inventory of the contents of the box. Uh, an 1867 Ben Franklin stamp worth 935000 A Swedish three-skilling banco worth $2.3 million. Oh, dear. Oh. A Hawaiian missionary issue worth 760000 A bottom nine Kruger error run worth one million three hundred forty. That's mine. That's mine. No, it's mine. That's it's mine. mine. No way! Yes, it's mine! It's mine. It's mine. A, a Tiflis 1857 stamp from Russia worth 500000 And an issue by the Meridius Post Office worth 600000 How do you feel now, Alice? Well, much, much better now, Mr. Spade. So happy that I could just burr. <laughs> I can't thank you enough. How can I ever repay you? You just have thanked me enough. I, I'm glad everything turned out so well for you, Marla. I'll watch your career develop and I'll be cheering you all the way. Sam, I think there's any chance, any chance at all. Maybe we wouldn't have to watch each other from across the country. Maybe we could be together again. Uh, be careful now, boss. Uh, Marla, I've learned never to say never, but... You're going to be a major executive on the fast track in California, and I'm going to be a working detective here. I'd say time and distance will probably be against us, but let's try to keep in touch for as long as we both want to. All right. I'll just pay you the standard fee then. Oh, uh, no, thanks. But I, I think that would set a bad precedent. I'll, I'll be content with just the standard fee. Didn't she just say she was going to pay you the standard fee? I was about to add that I was going to give you a hefty bonus. <laughs> but now you're not. That's my boss, <laughs> always sticking to his standard fees. <laughs> Ms. Munson, I guess you could just send us a check for the standard fee. Standard fee, uh, standard and fee. Expenses. Standard fee. <laughs> I'll take the bonus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, but maybe you could put a stamp in the envelope. <laughs> Well, I think this calls for continuing the party. We can all celebrate now. And ding dong, the wicked Lyndon is dead. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Now if you can disrobe our characters here. I am, I am the alter ego of, of Alice, Kathy Strouch, and Joseph Strouch, thank you. <laughs> Where are you? John McInerney. These are my folks. Jeff Ginsburg, our beloved butler.
we have Vinny. Oh, we have uh, Katie O'Hara was our, our guest. She's over there. She's where? Katie. 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 Albert, tell us. We are, uh, we're the gourmet guys located here in Scranton. Um, we're a personal chef service. Um, we have a um, one service where we come into your home and and prepare a week's worth of meals at one time for you. Um, a second possibility is if you like the idea of getting the meals but don't want uh, want want us cooking in your kitchen. Um, although we do clean up. Um, we also prepare meals in our restaurant kitchen and deliver them for a week at a time. Uh, and it's all custom created. There, there are no two clients' meals are the same each week. Uh, it's, it, we figure out what it is you like to eat and what your dietary needs are. We have a lot of clients recently who have been contacting us because they're following not only uh, a uh, vegan diet but a whole food plant-based diet. Uh, and. We've been um, doing a lot of that lately, but we'll accommodate whatever uh, dietary needs there are. Uh, if you happen to be going to the Taste of the Abingdons tomorrow, you can taste one of our vegan uh, delicacies. We're doing little um, lion's mane mushroom um, crab cakes uh, with, a, with a lemon aioli. But uh, that's at the country club tomorrow. But anyway, thank you for having us. It's always a delight to cook for you, and I hope to see you at your holiday party. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't know if, if, if some of you are familiar with Roberto's uh, restaurant and pizzeria in Westside. It's been there for 38 years. My dad used to eat there all the time. He lives around the corner. And um, the um, husband and wife team who ran it have just retired, and so uh, we thought, well, we wanted a kitchen, so we bought it. And uh, so when we're not doing gourmet, guys, we're making pizza and pasta. <laughs> Uh, I have a client in uh, Lake Ariel, um, and oh, and we do catering, obviously. So, <laughs> so and we'll travel almost any distance for that. So, our website is uh, gourmetguys.net. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and Paul, in case you didn't know, all these groups, my actors here, we're all of Actors Circle. Our show is opening next weekend. Come blow your horn, Thursday through Sunday for two weekends. I made flyers. That includes that, plus this other thing going on afterwards at Actors Circle. And here at the Rossetti House, we're planning a holiday sing, singing yeah. holiday. Yes, this is sec our second one. Yes. We're making it in. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and that's no December 9th. All that information is on those flyers. I made lots of them. So take them home with you. All right?